And joining us right now is the author of the best-selling book, It's Better to Be Feared, about the uh, New England Patriots dynasty and the pursuit of greatness, Seth Wickersham, back here on The Rich Eisen Show. How are you, Seth? Good, man. How are you? I'm doing fine. So let's get uh, first up about uh, why you think Brady decided to finally hang them up, in your estimation. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's one reason. I do think that you can't overlook the fact that football is really hard. And (laughs) he's made it look so easy for so long that it's kind of easy to take for granted. But it is really hard to play football especially entering your 40s at a high level. Nobody really knows except for him what that's like. And I think that he was being honest when he referenced in his statement today that, you know, he didn't feel like he could give that effort, right? He's always said, once you stop, you're done. And But I do think there are some other factors at play. I mean, he loved the coaches in Tampa Bay. But he, you know, referenced it in his statement today that he would drive Bruce Arians crazy. I mean, sometimes the Bucs coaches – weren't quite as buttoned up as things were in New England. And I think that, you know, the way you saw the way they lost that game to the Rams, isolating Cooper Cup on a safety is an example of that. Um, You know, they're a team in transition, and they're going to have some roster and salary cap issues. And then I think that more than anything, you saw him take steps this past year to be known as more than just Tom Brady, the quarterback, and really more than Tom Brady, the quarterback, and fitness guru. I mean, you saw – he, he launched his podcast with Jim Gray and Larry Fitzgerald. He did Man in the Arena um, and the Brady brand. I think that he – that it really seemed to energize him in a way that, you know, for the longest time I think that only football could. And, you know, he sees a lot of global potential with that, especially with the TB12, you know, pairing it up with some of the methodologies of the TB12. All that said – this is a gigantic hole that he is leaving in his life. It's a void. There's a reason why he's said in the past that he'll consider therapy when he walks away because, as, as Giselle has said, football is his first love. And um, as we know with, with great athletes, when they walk away, the golf courses and the private jets and you know the cushy paid speeches get old fast. Yeah, I know, and it's just it's going to be weird for fans too because um, I, I thought he could have kept playing, you know, and um, and obviously he didn't end it um, with a win in the Super Bowl, and I always thought that you know Tom Brady would absolutely add himself to the list of Peyton Manning and Strahan and Elway and Bettis, right? That mm-hmm. you know uh, that that's the way they did it. You know Ray Ray Lewis, right? I mean, like that's the way to do it. And he wouldn't want to even walk into the bust room one day knowing he's got the every possible record that others have something that he doesn't. You know, I I, I always kind of figure, but you can't control that. Um, can't, with the exception of last year, he could have. Last year he could have. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think he's always been a little bit different. Like there was a moment that. I was at his. I was in his living room, and we were talking. This was maybe seven years ago. It was before the sort of rest of the dynasty, which not only the Patriots but really the Tom Brady dynasty, kind of was reclamated. And he was telling me about they had just lost to the Ravens in the playoffs, and he told me that Kurt Warner had sent him a text after the game saying, "Like being the best doesn't mean you always win. It just means you win more than anybody else." And that text really meant a lot to him because it, it spoke to his essence in a way that very few messages could. It, yes, it's always about winning, but it was often in failure that he found successes. And, you know, the, the people, there's people who argued he'd never leave New England after throwing a pick six on his final throw against the Titans. And there's people who'd argue he'd never go out losing to the Los Angeles Rams in the playoffs. But, you know, that was... It, ne- it always misread him just a little bit. I think that what he prided himself on as much as anything is this kind of genius he had of refusing to concede to anyone else's idea of the inevitable or of reality in that regard. ESPN senior writer and author of the uh, the book, It's Better to Be Feared, Seth Wickersham, right here on the Rich Eisen Show. What about the way it all went down? for retiring that was weird there's no other way to put it and normally that's not a word that you associate with tom brady when he can control something right yeah it, so you know it was weird um i think that those close to him 
And, you know, people inside the box started to see this coming maybe about a month and a half ago. Um, we did like a playoff predictions column on ESPN.com before the playoffs, and I predicted that Brady would retire after this year. And it wasn't a report. It was a prediction. But I had just heard enough that, you know, I think that all of the, the, the strain from the game, all of the opportunities beyond, it, it was just starting to crystallize for him. And remember, when he left New England, he signed a two-year contract. I know that he renegotiated it in the offseason and was talking about playing until he's 55, but a lot of that was like kind of for salary cap purposes. He signed a two-year deal, and I think that you know, the people close to him were always kind of looking at that as an end date. Obviously, he could change his mind at any time, but so when, he, when, when Adam Schefter and Jeff Darlington a week ago reported that he was noncommittal towards returning to the Bucks, I think that was a huge tell. And then, obviously, the report over the weekend came out and then got some fierce blowback. But, you know, I think that he was always going to retire. They always knew how this was going to end. Adam and Jeff had to weather the storm for their reporting to be validated. And um, it's pretty obvious, given that the commissioner weighed in, Peyton Manning weighed in, that today, this morning, was going to be the morning that he was going to do it. Well, again, I, I, I never, you know, um, doubted Jeff and uh, Schefter's reporting. It was just definitely not the manner in which he yeah. he, had, he he wanted it yeah. out there, right? And then the question is, is just, you know, even last night, you know, having his own podcast at his disposal um, and and then choosing this manner in which to do it, um, do you think this was the plan? Like, what was the plan? Best you could I, tell, do you think? Yeah, I mean, I think that it was, you know, given that other people have, had kind of come out and, and you know, congratulated him on his career, like Peyton, like, you know, Robert Kraft, like Roger Goodell. But that said, I mean, you know, this it was a messy process. It really was. And, um, but, you know, I'm sure that, like, even Jeff and Adam reporting it, had to have been a little surprised by the, you know, just how stiff the blowback was. I don't know that for a fact. I'm just guessing. But, you know, here we are. And, you know, he ended up doing it. And, um, you know, it's just you run out of superlatives to say. I, when he was first starting out, mm-hmm. I forget who it was. Someone was close to him was saying that, like, he wants to have a career that makes you forget any other quarterback. And, you know, it was, like, that's such a bold statement that, I never forgot it. And at the time, he hadn't even won a second Super Bowl yet. <laughs> you know, this was – at the time, he looked like another in a trend, right? Like like Kurt Warner and Jake DeLome and these guys who kind of come out of nowhere and end up having success. It, he didn't look like anything that he would become. And I'll never forget someone said that. And I, I just think it, like, always spoke to his ambition. And here we are all these years later, two decades later – and it really is. His accomplishments are so vast and so far-reaching that it really is kind of – it makes other guys who accomplish phenomenal feats in the game look small. Oh, yeah. I mean, like from now on, you got to win four to be in the conversation, right? <laughs> and you, and you got to be above four. Well, you got to be in four, in four in terms of the conversation of best, you know, um, second best ever. Right. Yeah. And then and then you've got to pass that and then you've got to last as long as Brady did and look as great as Brady did while <laughs> lasting as long as he did to even be remotely in his arena, to use his yeah. phrase. Like, that's it from now on. And when we were kids, it was like you got two. Now we're talking about getting you a Boston Canton. Right. Like now, two is just like one quarter of the way there. I mean, yeah. it's totally been watching, reset. Yeah. Last night was the anniversary of. um the Broncos Super Bowl win over the Falcons. That was Elway's final game. And he's scrambling around in that game, throwing 80 yard bombs for touchdowns. And, you know, he walked away with two straight Super Bowl wins and five Super Bowl appearances and the winningest quarterback in NFL history. And that just looked like it was untouchable. He looked like he was walking away, not maybe at the top of his game, but he maybe could have kept going. And, you know, Brady eclipsed five Super Bowls a long time ago. So uh, just in that respect, then, um, the next step, does he do what uh, Elway did? Does he want to get in, um, you know, football um, 
management? Does he want to own a team? Clearly, it seems like he's got his own businesses. That's what he wants to do. Anything he wants to do in media, anyone will fall over themselves to get him. So, you know, what do you think? Next act, final for his next act. Yeah, I mean, I think that for the immediate future, I think he's really going to try to take his brand and the TV12 and the Brady brand global and, and see what the potential is with that. But that said, you know, a lot of these guys walk away and they think, you know, they're going to be content without the, the game that, you know, really sustained them and brought them so much joy. I, I, that is going to be him. I mean, remember Ray Thompson wrote that great article on Michael Jordan years ago where Jordan's watching LeBron James on TV and talking about how he would defend him, knowing that he could if he just were a little bit younger, if not for time. And Tom's going to tune in and watch quarterbacks and know that he could do this better. And, you know, when that goes away, I don't know. I remember I was with Elway, and you and I talked about it, um, and he was right after they won the Super Bowl when he was the general manager. I think he was 55 at the time. And he said to me flat out, like, up until a couple of years ago, I thought I could still play. And, you know, that, that itch, that compulsion, that desire never goes away. And I don't know what Brady's life looks like without that. I don't think he's going to find as much joy um, talking about the game, you know, would he ever be rich enough to own a team? I, I you know, that I, I don't know. But either, even so, even being an owner, um, you know, you have the highs and the lows, but you're not as close. You're not part of the team. You're not in the locker room. Um, I think it's going to be a big adjustment, and it's something that he's known about for a long time, tried to prepare for. It's still going to be hard, though, I think. So last one for you, kind of waited to finish up uh, with this one. Again, your book, Seth Wickersham, It's Better to Be Field, The New England Patriots Dynasty and the Pursuit of Greatness is just one of the best inside looks you can have to date for sure on the Patriots and then for any team uh, in recent memory, sir. So what do you make of Brady leaving the Patriots out of his career retirement statement? You know, I don't think it was an accident at all. I, I still think that there are some hard feelings over the way that he left and the fact that they opened the door for him to leave and he walked right out. But I think that he will find a way to address his full career um, probably pretty soon. You know, who knows, maybe a video, something like that. But I think that he'll figure out a way to address it and, you know, make it very clear that, you know, he was a New England Patriot and that he cherishes a lot of those memories. Yeah, I mean, uh, let's be honest. I mean, th- there was no uglier exit between all-time great for a franchise and franchise than Favre and the Packers. Mm-hmm. It couldn't have been uglier, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, where where the successor was drafted and mm-hmm. waiting and all of that. I mean, I don't need to re-litigate, re- re- if you will, but it was ugly. And Favre and the and the Packers are are all cool right now, so I'm not concerned about all that. But what what is it like? I thought Brady and, and Belichick had a a chat and a confab after the Week Four uh, game that put this stuff to bed or came close. Did it not? Then did it? Well, not? I think that Brady is always going to love Bill Belichick for the chance that he gave him and how invested he was in him. Um, but you know, the Patriots made an organizational decision that they didn't think he could play another two years. You know, they wanted to keep it year by year at a lower, you know, cap number. And, you know, after all that he had accomplished, he was ready to go. And look what he did. I mean, he threw for over 5,000 yards this year. I think that, including the playoffs, he must have come close to 100 touchdown passes in two years in Tampa. It's just phenomenal how good he was, how good he is. And it's just as mind-boggling as his entire career is, it's just as mind-boggling that he's walking away having accomplished, you know, coming off the season that he had. No he doubt. Be an MVP. No doubt. But, I mean, and not to turn this into a debate show, but uh, this kind of is an interesting subject matter, and you are an expert at it for sure. Um, but, I mean, earlier on in this conversation, you were even saying part of the consideration of no longer playing now is the roster and things are being remade. I mean, like he went, he turned, he, he turned Nikhil Harry into Mike Evans. You know what I mean? Like, that, let, let's be honest. I mean, part of the reason why he left New England is because it was not a tenable spot in which to win a championship in 2020, which he did 
you know, Gronk wasn't going to be coming back through that door in New England, but did in Tampa. I mean, it all worked out. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So to leave New England out entirely from a statement where he's thanking staffers for the Bucks, it's it's kind of uh, a head scratcher. I'll be honest, unless there is so much water underneath this bridge still. And you're saying there pretty much still is. I mean, I think that I think that the fact that he did it, I, like I said, I just I don't think it was an accident. Um, you know, but it'll be it'll also be interesting to see where he lives. You know, does he decide to live in Miami? They're building a house in Miami, and you know, in a year, this, his old friend Stephen Ross, old Michigan guy, right? You know, let him know that the door's open just in case he wants to. You know, make that short commute to the Dolphins facility. It'll be interesting. <laughs> All right, I, I believe there is a, a, yeah. a, a real-time update here, Seth. Yeah, Breaking guys, news. Yeah, guys, just a couple minutes ago, Brady on his Instagram story uh, kind of like, quote, saved the, the Bob Kraft statement and then did a thank you, Patriots and Patriots Nation with two hearts. There okay. you go. All right. So, nothing, so in nothing, other words, nothing, the Patriots are not like the Instagram story. So, so, <laughs> no, so, so basically, we have we, th- this is a 21st century thing. Certainly for a 44 year old man that's retiring. Uh, the the, the hold on So, so basically, the Patriots are not Instagram feed worthy, <laughs> right? But Instagram story worthy. But Instagram stories are shareable in the way that the feed is not, right? So where do we like? Do we is, does a TikTok break the tie or what is well, that? Is I'm it, just also thinking about the effort Tom had to go to. He would have had to screenshot the Patriot uh, statement, then put it into a story, and then type out some text. I mean, a lot Seth, of effort there. Seth, this is for the uh, paperback, I think. <laughs> there you go. I mean, I'm really going to go down the rabbit hole on this one. <laughs> <laughs> but literally, like that's what I. I I, I, that one leap leapt out at me, and then uh, the fact that the word retirement wasn't in there either. It's just like, you know, I'm going to F you to father time. I'm not going to even use that word in my walkaway statement. You know what I'm saying? Like, I dug that one, too. That one, <laughs> caught, I caught my eye on that. Seth, thanks for the time, man. Always appreciate the two cents that you, and, uh, that you are, are willing to provide here. Thanks again. My pleasure, man. Thank you. You bet. Take care. Uh, Seth Wickersham, I follow him on Twitter. You should as well, at Seth Wickersham on Instagram, uh, I mean, on Twitter, uh, and uh, it's better to be feared where all books are sold. What a great book this is. Yes, everything Seth writes, you must read. Okay, so um, right here on The Rich Eisen Show.